Every day I get questioned about herbs and supplements by pediatricians in my hospital, in my clinic, across the country, about what's safe and what is okay to use in their patient population. It's daunting. There are so many herbs and supplements out there. Where do we even begin? Hi, I'm Dr. Cora Colette Bruner, and I'm a professor of pediatrics and adjunct professor of orthopedics and sports medicine at Seattle Children's Hospital. It is really hard to be a pediatrician right now and to cover all the things you're supposed to cover in a well visit, and then you have at the end of the visit, a family will toss at you, how about melatonin? How about St. John's wort? Is it okay to use magnesium? What about vitamin D? What about fish oil? It's the end of a very busy day, and you have to figure out very quickly how to help this family navigate all the different resources that there are out there, all over the internet, which is basically what you're trying to help them do in a really short period of time. There's a really quick way to look up how to use these things, and to be recognizing that if you are recommending a certain product, that the product you're recommending has a USP label on it, which means that company asks for a third party to make sure that it is safe, that lacks contaminants, and that it is consistently batched so that they know that what's in the product is what's supposed to be in there. There's definitely companies out there that have products that are safe. There are companies out there that don't. So one of the things that's important for you as a pediatrician to trust certain resources, the CDC website is excellent and has a lot of uh, articles and webinars that you can go to to keep yourself current. You can join our section of integrative medicine, which is part of the American Academy of Pediatrics, where there are robust listserv discussions every day discussing different herbs and supplements. Talk to your colleagues, talk to your families, listen to your families. We do know that there's a certain demographic patient that we think doesn't use herbs or supplements, that is not true. Everybody does, no matter what their race, no matter what their ethnicity. There's ways of doing this in a very safe and effective way. People don't have to just throw up their hands and say, I don't know, because there are ways to find out more about it. They can reach out to people like me who do this kind of work every day. They need to make sure that they ask every single time they see a patient in their practice, are there any herbs or supplements? Is there anything else that you're using with your child to make them feel better? Because we do know that, especially in our medically complex kids, 70% of these families are using some sort of herb or supplement in addition to what we're prescribing. People are turning to herbs and supplements because that's been part of their culture. And we should embrace that, ask what's going on, and make sure that we can help provide the best resources to help these kids have a happy and successful life.